интересно звуковому докладу за сегодня. Благодаря ребятам из Strategic Music станет возможно понять, почему звук крайне важен для игр, как с помощью него сделать игру намного популярнее и как следовательно успешно с точки зрения бизнеса. Ребята большие профессионалы в своем деле, огромное количество игр было озвучено ими с помощью совершенно разных звуковых эффектов, начиная от подошвы ботинка до, до симфонических оркестров. Передаю им слово. Прошу любить и жаловать. Thank you. So my name is Dmitry Kuzmenko and I am the CEO of Strategic Music. Our company was founded in 2003 and since that time we atmospheric more than 300 different games for different platforms. And our presentation is called Jack into the Matrix of Sound. Excite your players in your bank account. So developers, please pay attention. So we've got some experience. We work with more than 60 companies all over the world. And uh, having this experience, we definitely can say how important audio part of a game is. So uh, audio part of a game has a very, a really great feature. It can be memorized and more importantly, it can be recited by people everywhere. I think you all and, and even who can sing a song can recite something from a game, something I mean from the audio, from the game. I think you all know this very simple rhythm. I'll try to, to play it like like Queen we will rock you. I should stumble on the floor, but I can. So it's very f famous rhythm and it's known by everyone. And it's very simple, but I have even more simpler example. Let's see. Do you know what it is? It's uh, the most famous breath in the world, Darth Vader's breath. So it's very known. It, it's, it's not even music, it's not even a phrase, it's just a simple sound. So people can memorize and recite sounds from the game and they can do it in many ways. You can ask me, what do you need that for? What does it mean for your game? And I'll try to tell you about that. So do you sing in a shower? I bet you do. Or uh, can you imagine yourself going down the street and you start whistling a melody suddenly, which was suddenly stuck in your head? I think, of course, you have experienced this situation before many times. So if you can do it, people, the players, your players, they can do it as well. And so they can recite the part of your game, which they believe is a cool part. Of course, it has to be something cool. They can do it everywhere. So they can impart that coolness to other people. And this can have very positive effect on your game. So because they will promote your game absolutely for free. And from this moment, the audio part starts working like a virus. It's infectious and impossible to avoid. I'll give you another example. Let's listen to that simple, catchy and funny melody. This pretty simple and catchy melody, and uh, let's show it again. It's very easy to memorize, and I can tell you that this melody can easily become a standalone brand, and lots of people will want to use it as their ringtone. Uh, how does it work? Imagine that you play a game. You like the melody from the main menu of that game and 
so you use it as your ringtone and your phone is ringing and your friend who even doesn't know anything about that game he could ask you like hey dude what's that ringtone from it sounds pretty cool and you can answer him that hey man it's from their new game it's from farming birdsville and uh, he can answer you what what farming birdsville can you please show me it and you show it to your friend so boom 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 your game Another person has just been farmed or charmed by your game. So this funny catchy melody works for your game and people just spread that coolness of the game absolutely for free and they do it in even faster and in a more authentic way that any traditional marketing can. It's not a performance, it's just real life. It's the most efficient way of advertising your game for sure and however you might be careful uh, to not forget to pay something to people who made this coolness but it wouldn't be all that much I assure you so and it's not only connected with music you can easily make people memorizing and reciting the game scripts just you only have to do uh, is what uh, to you have to create cool scripts and record cool characters and you'll see how people start copying, start copying your characters. I think all of you know these very famous phrases. Let's listen to them. I'll be back. All your days are belonging to us. You are on the way to destruction. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. The name's Bond. James Bond. So, you see what I mean? They are, these are just phrases. They are not music. They are not sounds. So, and we have the same situation here. The people, if you made a cool script and filled it with awesome characters, they will spread it again. Uh, they will impart it to other people, and so they will promote your game for free. And these things are very important to your game. Uh, because it, they uh, let your game to, uh, let your game stand above the crowd uh, to be be seen by people in everywhere and, <clears throat> and be, be seen I mean be seen by people out of the thousand and thousand uh, similar project which were made by your competitors and the cool audio can make your game your company your brand, your IP more famous and of course it will make you more money and someone will talk with investors standing from a higher position. Okay, so let's get to another part. Now how to do it? We met tons of developers and uh, I can tell you that you easily can divide all of them into two parts. The first, perfect masters of everything and the busy guys. The first guys, the masters, they think that they know everything, they try to control everything, they are sure that they know everything I just told you about a bit earlier and they make all decisions personally. They eagerly want to impart to us their perfect knowledge of making, about making the audio atmosphere. So how to compose a catchy melody? They say, we know how. How to, cre how to create a great script filled with awesome characters? They say, it's child's, child's play. We know how to do it. Some of them go even deeper. Like how to record a sound of an octopus eating a cookie. And these guys tell that of course we know how to do it because we, li we have listened closely to tons of octopi ingesting different kinds of cookies. So I must tell that we've got some business to run here and of course I will, I never tell them that I don't need the perfect knowledge and I won't tell them something like, hey mister, um, 
I've got my full education for five years in the University of Arts, and I scored quite a few games, and actually I know something. No, otherwise, I, <clears throat> I just suck everything they tell me in like a sponge with uh, cunning, eager to please smile on my face, and I assure you that every smart sound guy does that. Well, it's funny, but I must say that this situation uh, can have some harmful effects on a game because uh, going into the world of sounds distracts you too much from your game. You see, the world of sounds is a quite different place to live. It's quite a different world, and you have to tune your brains exactly uh, to tune your brains absolutely to a different frequency. And so, when you return to your game again, you have to switch your brains again. And this distracts you from your game. And it's no good. And it's like I I want to tell you a really strange phrase. <laughs> it's like looking for a tree in the forest and the I'm sorry, let me just read it. Well, it's like looking for a tree in a forest and a forest from the trees at the same time. So, I don't know what is it, but <laughs> it's his idea. Busy guys. The busy guys are quite opposite. They are best friends of all audio community and actually they are, I think that they are the best friends of their game they are developing. So they're so busy while they are creating unique features for their game, inventing like new marketing strategy and something like that, that they don't have time to over control our job. And we are living in our world of catchy melodies uh, tasty sound morsels and believable voiceovers without being distracted. And we feel freedom and we appreciate that so much that we do exactly the same thing we told you about before. And I'm sure that it's good for, that, for these busy guys too because they don't need to switch their brains back and forth diving into our world and then back again into their developer world. So all I happy. So in what do we do if we uh, have got an order for, from busy guys, from the busy guys? We just deal directly with the game audience because we know who they are and we know how to make them feel excited, how to make them feel scared in the scary game of course and how to make them smile and the most important we know how to make them remember your game because it's our job. So, let's be busy. Let's go to another part. But how to evaluate our job? I don't encourage developers to pay no attention to what we are doing. Because even our little crazy world of sounds needs some control. But how to do it right? It's pretty easy. You only have to keep in mind that the audio is only a part of a game. So it's a part of a whole piece. So you have to judge is you have to judge it as a part of a game, but not as something separate from the game. What do you do? What do you need to make a perfect evaluation? So you need you only need a couple thousand computers, couple thousand gamers and couple thousand pairs of headphones. But I think something tells me that only few have these capabilities and of course you can use your family members, your friends and just give them your device, iPod or whatever else you have and start the game. But please attention here. Never Ask them to judge the audio. It, is, it sounds paradoxical, but it's true. Uh, audio is only part of a game, you remember? And so if you told them that they should concentrate their attention on the audio part, they will do this and, yeah, and they will like 
they will tell you something which is not objective. So they are concentrate. They they will be concentrating on the audio part, and they will miss how it actually works. Nobody does that. I can't. So a whole product shouldn't be evaluated piece by piece. I can't imagine a movie screen test where people are being asked to judge, like not the whole movie, but for example, makeup of actors, decorations, music or sound. So in this case, their, percep their perception will be unbalanced and they will tell you strange things just to prove that they are doing something valuable. And um, so every sound and every song doesn't need criticism all of the time, believe it or not. And you can ask your testers if they like the music or sounds voiceovers only after they have finished playing the game. Because this perception will be balanced well and they will tell you just objective things what a normal person will notice. So this is the best way of uh, evaluate, of figuring out how good audio is. In conclusion, I have to say that just make cool games, be busy, let experts use their expertise. And now William Buckner will tell you something interesting about voiceovers. Thanks. Thank you very much, guys. Just give me a just give me a couple minutes, please. Yeah. Okay, so I spend a lot of time doing voiceover directing things, and there's just a couple things I want to say to finish up the day. I know you guys are probably tired and maybe hungry, I don't know. But anyways, so the main thing I want to, I want to share with you is the 90s, the 90s are over. The 90s were great. I loved playing games in the 90s. Sometimes I like playing these games still, but the time to make 90s audio for games is over. We can't do it anymore. And bad voiceovers was acceptable because we were excited. Games, they have voices in them, and it's amazing. I can't believe it. Do you play this game? It's crazy. There's a voice in it, but not anymore. So players aren't amazed by this anymore. They, they expect it, and they not only expect it, they expect great voiceovers. So bad acting and, and bad script writing can completely ruin a game because people have higher expectations. And beyond that, bad translations can really, really ruin a game because it feels like people are completely clueless about what's happening with their own game. It, it can really stop you cold in your tracks when you see something that doesn't make sense because it was translated wrong. So that's a real important thing to pay attention to. And vo voiceovers drive the game's action directly. They, they have to focus from the beginning of, of the development of the game. Don't, don't think of it afterwards. It can't be an afterthought. You have to think at the beginning of when you start making a game what you want to do with the voiceovers. Otherwise, you'll have a very strange time implementing voiceovers in the game. And, of course, the reward will be you'll have good voiceovers and uh, people will like it quite a lot. Let, let me show you some... Uh, some examples of some, some, some olden days things that we can't do anymore. So this is, this is from an old game from the late 80s. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, uh, I'll read it to you. So, the president has been kidnapped by ninjas. Are you a bad enough dude to rescue the president? It's, it's pretty funny, pretty strange. Nowadays, I don't think it would go over very well with people. Um, continuing. Um, here, here's a, a classic failure. Uh, here's Astro Boy telling us, water are disappearing? It makes no sense. It, water, maybe the water is disappearing or something like that, but if, if you're, if you're an English-speaking person reads this, water are disappearing, they'll completely turn themselves off to the game and say bad words to Astro Boy for confusing them. Um, and then here, here's a, a classic one. Now, this, this was okay in the 80s. People loved The Legend of Zelda, but if you look at the directions of the game that they gave you, I'll just read it to you. Many years ago, Prince Darkness Ganon stole one of the Triforce with power. Princess Zelda had one of the Triforce with wisdom. She divided it into eight units to hide it from Ganon before she was captured. Go find the eight units link to save her. Now, that actually makes no sense whatsoever. If, if you know anything about Zelda, Link is the hero, and it makes it look like Link is an action. It's completely crazy. This, this 
worked back in the 80s. Now you can't do it. You have to be very careful. And one last classic for you. Um, I wrote, what isn't wrong with this? And it says, you will be servants of the Satan. And first off, that's grammatically wrong. It just should be servants of Satan. But it's also really bad script writing. So we need to avoid bad script writing because it uh, can really ruin a game and make you ridiculed forever, uh, actually. So let's avoid it. Uh, so let's get this started. What, if you think you might want voiceovers, contact the voiceover director as soon as possible and give them anything you have for your game. A plot description, a script, a character, character list, pictures, videos, anything you have, just to get the ideas rolling and to, to prepare yourself for, for making good voiceovers. Uh, it's one of those things that actually takes time to do well. So voiceovers give the game character, identity, and a brand unlike anything else. So, so careful planning and attention is, is very, very good to do. Uh, so finally, uh, let your voiceover director and the actors do what they do best. So if, if they spot a problem in your game, let them fix it. Don't be too proud or feel like, you know, I was told this is perfect. Well, if the actors and the director are trying to do it and it's not perfect, it's not perfect. And, and, and try to figure out a way to, to make it better. And after that, you need to check everything that you do in the game and make sure that it works. Things might seem good in concept and then when you put it in the game, it doesn't. So that means you need to give a little time for corrections to iron out anything that, that might be confusing. And then finally, let your cool voiceovers win players over one person at a time. And that's it. Thank you, guys. Спасибо ребятам. Давайте зададим вам какие-нибудь вопросы. Добрый день. Скажите, пожалуйста, когда речь идет о разработке iPhone и iPad, да, вы наверняка озвучивали игры для этих устройств. Объем звука примерно какой получается? Потому что это очень важный параметр, особенно учитывая то, что, там, скажем, штатовский рынок, лучше, чтобы игра была там, до 20 метров с возможностью скачивания через сей 3G. То есть вот объем звука, который вот будет занимать в игре примерно хотя бы. Ну, вы знаете, тут, возможно, два варианта, потому что если вы реально хотите уместить вашу игру в 20 мегабайт, то там влезет, конечно, не очень много звука. Но в последнее время мы занимаемся озвучиванием игр, которые и далеко не в 20 мегабайт умещаются, и там гигантские объемы по звуку. Там и voice-over, и музыка, и звук. Как в обычных играх для любых устройств. И надо иметь в виду, что если вы делаете игру для iPhone, вы же захотите ее сделать и для iPad, а там как бы ну, она воспринимается как нечто более серьезное. То есть почти нет разницы уже между обычными казуальными играми для PC и для, между играми для iPhone, для iOS. То есть вы хотите сказать, что звуки для iPhone и для iPad будут разные? Нет, они, я, я хочу сказать, что просто ну, вы будете делать кросс-платформенную кросс версию, правильно? И ну, не только вы, и вот те люди, которые к нам обращаются, и мы делаем очень большие объемы звука для этого. То есть, если они хотят уместить 20 мегабайт, это понятно. А в основном уже таких игр меньше. Ну, по нашему опыту, который через нас проходит. Okay, спасибо. Я хотел спросить, ребят, насколько, ну, то есть, вот, мне кажется, что существует такая проблема, что не все люди одевают там наушники, да, когда начинают играть в игры, да, скажем, там, социальные и так далее. То есть я, например, пробую какую-то игру, и если мне она только нравится, там через месяц, скажем, один наушник э, игры. Как вы предлагаете, насколько с вашей точки зрения это проблема, и как с вашей точки зрения с этим можно бороться? Я думаю, что это никакая не проблема. Те, кто любит музыку, а любят музыку... Я думаю, большинство людей и любят, чтобы все хорошо звучало. Ну, то есть те люди, которые имеют нормальный вкус, те, если вы сделаете свою работу хорошо, сочините клевую мелодию, то люди наденут наушники. И я никакой проблемы тут не вижу. Ну, почему? Играйте в разные игры, не только там в одну, где может быть недостаточно хорошая мелодия. Хорошо, спасибо. Ну, все, давайте поблагодарим ребят. Спасибо им огромное за интересный доклад. Спасибо.